You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, L.I. Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. Well, let's do a quick review. We've had uh, a a tepid week relative to a couple of weeks back. Uh, A lot of earnings were announced, and we're getting through the bulk of their earnings quarter. But we still have a few companies that have recently announced that announced this week we're not quite all the way through earnings season yet and so uh last week we actually looked at a trade after earnings we looked at at two trades and here on options playbook radio what we like to talk about are as many different strategies as possible i'll get asked a lot of times what is your favorite strategy and i don't really think i have a favorite strategy i like to look at inside the playbook and try to figure out based off of these market conditions what is my outlook for the options on this underlying stock. And around earnings is when you can get the most creative. So what we did in the prior two weeks on Options Playbook Radio, and they both honestly were um, good trades overall, and they had uh, they, they should have been profitable if you would have traded them correctly. But once again, Nothing's meant to be a recommendation. We're just looking to uh, learn here on Options Playbook Radio. But we went and looked at a skip strike butterfly in Google before earnings. And uh, after the earnings announcement, also, we decided, well, let's do a rinse and repeat. And let's look at another skip strike butterfly. And part of the reason why we'd like to do that is that uh, we still have volatile markets, So you can get more creative in the type of strategies that you would like to do. For example, going into that earnings, I definitely would have wanted to do a skip strike. Without a doubt, I wasn't going to just go out and try to sell some premium and have no protection uh, against a movement uh, that that would hurt me. So by doing the skip strike, you're you're kind of you're you're a little bit uh, you're, you're selling a call spread but then you're buying a butterfly with that credit to help protect you if that market goes against you. And by doing that, if every once in a while you can get lucky, and if the, the underlying stock actually finishes close to the short strike of the butterfly, not only can you make a net credit um, from putting the initial trade on, sometimes you can even close them out for a net credit if it moves within the specific range. So 
that happened after earnings. We were able to put the trade on uh, for a net credit to the account because of all the increased volatility and go way out of the money. And, and Google made a really strong move. But then we came back and looked at doing one right after earnings. Volatility had came off. I'd already made a strong move. So a lot of times I might think about after earnings in a environment where the VIX is lower than where it's at, that just overall volatility in the marketplace, where the VIX is down around 15%, I might just sell a call spread. But instead of doing that after the move, we decided to do another, uh, another VIX butterfly trade. So what happened with that trade? It's very straightforward because the market did slow down. It's, it's, we had the big move up. And then if you look at the chart on the VIX, uh, we taped, I'm sorry, the chart on Google, we taped Options Playbook Radio after the markets closed on the 3rd of February. And from that point on, we went quite a bit out of the money. Uh, Google was trading at 2058. We were able to sell the 2120, 2150, and the 2110 for a net credit of a dollar to the account. Surprised we could get that wide and still get it done for a net credit, but that's the sign of the times. And what ended up happening in Google is that we had that underlying run up about 30 points, never really even got close to our our initial option that we bought, the, the, the closest to the money option contract, the 2120. So uh, we succeeded in our goal in that uh, we did it for a net credit of a dollar that should have expired worthless. Maybe there was an opportunity to close it a little bit early and get a little bit more, but uh, ideally we protected ourselves again. We're able, because of the volatility, to get a decent credit in the account. And uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, it was only a three-day trade. The big news event was out of there. Uh, so we were able to pull in a net credit of a dollar to the account. And that's just interesting because that makes those trades feasible. When we have the general market volatility up higher, and then you go and look at the actual volatility of the underlyings, on these expensive underlyings, doing three or four day butterflies are real interesting to do. When vols are high, they're cheaper to put on. And then the one of the great things about an expensive underlying, and we have weekly option contracts is, by the end of the week, I don't care how much volatility there is or how much time premium there initially was when you bought that uh, butterfly or did that fancy trade, it's got to go away. The time premium has to go away. Why? Because we're going to approach expiration. So it makes a very dynamic marketplace for that option trading. So we've had a couple of exciting weeks, so I want to settle down just a little bit. And I want to talk about something I haven't talked about in quite a while. I'm going to actually look at energy. For the first time, the, the, the big financial stations are actually talking about energy stocks again. And the, and the, question, and the reason why is that they're actually moving. Uh, oil has actually had a couple of strong weeks here. Uh, bro, it's, 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 it's coming close to $60 a barrel on, on the crude oil futures. And, and so because of that, uh, a lot of the energy stocks have, have kind of made decent moves. And we had uh, the, the most, I guess, one of the largest companies out there, and I've talked about it before on Options Playbook Radio, is ExxonMobil. Uh, it has a decent dividend yield, and they're one of the big players in this marketplace. And just by looking at the chart, we actually had a little bit of a breakout. Uh, the stock did make, uh, it's not all the way back to its highs since before the pandemic, but I think that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the pandemic as much as it does just that uh, oil is being challenged by a lot of other type of resources in the energy space just overall. So it's kind of had a, a, a tough battle and it might have a tough battle going ahead, but it definitely got beat up. And if we go back and we look at the March low, uh, ExxonMobil was down around thirty dollars, just doing a little bit of a round up, uh, round down. I'm sorry, uh, uh, down to thirty dollars, and then on the high before the pandemic, it was up around sixty one. So we did come back, but we haven't got back to that sixty one level. And this week they actually announced earnings, and they had a good quarter, and they had a good numbers overall, and that actually propelled it to a new high for the short term. So right now, uh, 
we're taping Options Playbook Radio. Uh, it is the 10th of February. The markets are closed. And we see that today, ExxonMobil closed up about 40, about 50 cents. We'll just round off here. And it, it closed at around 51.10. All right. Well, that was a fairly important level because right at that 50 level, uh, we actually were looking for a little bit of a breakthrough. And uh, last time that it's been through that level, it kind of filled a gap that it had where we had a little bit of a breakout and then we actually, it, it, it failed and went back down. And that was right at that 50, uh, 50 75 level. So it's fairly important that it actually stayed above that and it's at 51.10 right now. And because of that, let's sell a call spread. We have we have it done just a simple trade, hoping that it holds and hoping that it drifts higher. And part of the reason why I'm interested in doing this is once again, we have decent volatility. You can go out in a shorter term option contract and receive a, de a decent dollar amount. So let's just slow down. Let's look at the very basic short call spread, known as a credit spread, known as a vertical spread, saying that we want the stock to stay where it's at or drift higher. So we're doing something where we're just totally trying to bring in some of this volatility premium that still exists in the marketplace overall. So if I'm looking at doing my short call spread, uh, I'm only going. I'm going to use the February 26th expiration date, and that's only a couple weeks out. Now, granted, a lot of times if I'm just doing it to to bring in premium and the, and the market's not quite as volatile, I like to go out further in time, like maybe sell in this instance. Uh, we have 16 days remaining at expiration, but I kind of like the concept in, in different environments of selling a 40-day uh, option contract or short call spread and then buying it back approximately 20 days later, as opposed to doing it this way. And part of the reason why is that you just get a little bit more premium. Uh, that time actually gives you a little bit of protection if it goes against you. It's a decent rate of decay over that time period. But then again, that's in a lower volatile environment just overall. So if I'm looking at these weekly option contracts uh, as of today, they're still trading at a 40% 40, uh, 40 implied volatility. Um, this is ExxonMobil. It's a 40% implied volatility after earnings are announced. Um that is what attracts me to this, and that's why I'm thinking about doing a short call spread. Now, once again, I want you to do it on paper, not meant to be a recommendation. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit shorter in time because there's a lot of time premium that's in it, and uh, I'm looking for a large rate of time decay just overall on that trade. So we're going to pay attention to that the, the area where we made the breakout, and we're going to actually sell that February uh, 26th expiration, 16 days away, we're going to sell the 50 strike put, and then we're going to come back and go two points down, and we're going to buy the 48 strike put. We're going to do this for a net credit of 54 cents to the account. That means for every one by one spread that we do, we're going to bring in $54 less commissions on that trade, and that will actually be our maximum upside. Now, on the downside, we're doing it two points wide. So you take two minus 54, and you have a dollar 46 of downside risk. Earnings were just announced, but there is a lot of news out in the in the oil world. So that's one of the things about energy is it gets talked about a lot, and you do get hit with a lot of headlines overall. But with that said, we're seeing a 40% implied volatility after a known major event came out where we had a lot of good upside in that underlying. We're hoping that the little breakout that we had here recently continues and it continues on up or at least kind of stays the same, stays where it's at. Uh, underlying stock closed at exactly 51.12 of 49 cents. So we're doing a put credit spread um, and uh, also known as a vertical spread for the account, and we're neutral to bullish on this underlying. So recap, we're going to be selling the February 26th expiration 50 strike put, and at the same time buying that same expiration 48 strike put for a net credit of 54 cents to the account. 
And that's going to be it for this edition of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer on the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. Please follow me on Twitter. I've been tweeting a lot more about uh, the educational events that we have over at Ally Invest. My handle is very simple. It's just at Brian Overby. And thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.